hello students welcome to a lesson through the virtual training center of the brihan mumbai mahanagar palika my name is shraddha teacher and in this lockdown period since we are not able to go to school children we will be doing many lessons here online through the virtual class so come on let's proceed to our lesson for today we'll be doing a beautiful shakespeare and poem and the name of the poem is all the world's a stage now this is a part of a play which is written by william shakespeare and the poem is part of the play so we are going to look only at the poem we are going to try and understand what it means okay we will talk about what william shakespeare as a poet wants to tell us about the life of us human beings here on this earth now let us talk a little bit about the poet before we go to understanding more about the poem so this is a picture of william shakespeare now he was an english poet okay he was not only a poet he was also an actor he was a playwright he was a dramatist also he was born in the 16th century that is in the year 19 uh, 1564 and he died in 1616 and during this period of his lifetime he has written around 37 plays and he has also written around 150 sonnets now what are sonnets sonnets are 14 line lyrical poems okay and sonnets when he started writing sonnets a new kind of sonnets called as Uh, Shakespeare and sonnets also came into existence. So this was about this very very famous uh, personality in the field of English uh, literature, and that is William Shakespeare. He was also he was born in a place called Avon. So he is sometimes also called as the Bard of Avon, and he is also Britain's or England's national poet. So that is how famous this person is. in the field of english literature anyone who studies english language when he pursues higher studies in english language they definitely have to learn about william shakespeare about his works about what kind of poetry he wrote what kind of dramas he wrote etc so this was about the very famous poet william shakespeare now let us see one of the work of his that is he has written a play or a drama which is also a love story okay called as you like it so in this particular drama or in this particular story this part that we are learning today as the poem all the worlds a stage it is part of this particular drama or story as you like it okay so now let us talk about the topic of this particular poem the topic is all the worlds a stage now what is the meaning of all the worlds a stage that means the world is a stage for human beings the human beings are just actors in this world the people who are the people who come here they take their entry when they are born and when they are living their life here they are playing different roles okay and as soon as your role is over you take an exit from this stage of life when you take an exit it means that you will die your death is the exit and your birth is the entrance and all that happens between your birth and your death are just events are just roles that you are playing Okay, so let us now quickly read the poem and try to understand the meaning of the poem. Now, always when we do poems, usually you you will see there are some parts of figures of speech which is given with every poem. So today we will look at imagery as a figure of speech in this particular poem. But that will be later. Let us now read the poem and try to understand the meaning of the particular piece of poetry. So all the worlds a stage. and all the men and women merely players they have their exits and their entrances and 
one man in his time plays many parts his acts being seven ages that means he's saying that the world is a stage and we do, people are just players or actors on the stage when we are born we have our entry and when we die we have our exits and in the middle we go through seven acts or seven stages or seven ages now if you look at the stages properly in the first stage you will see a small baby then a little boy and then a school going child and then a young man middle aged man an old person and in the last stage a very old person so let's look at what the first stage in our life is at first the infant mewling now mewling means what crying okay and puking in the nurse's arms puking means vomiting throwing up in the nurse's arms then the whining school boy whining means a person who always complains and cries then the whining school boy with a satchel you can see the satchel also satchel means the school bag which you carry on your backs and shining morning face creeping like snail unwillingly to school so the school boy is not at all happy in going to school okay he is not at all like you children who are very interested in going to school and studying but this particular school boy he is not happy he is whining he is crying and he has to be dragged to school in the next part of the poem they say shakespeare says and then the lover sighing like furnace with woeful ballad made to his mistress's eyebrow so the next stage is when you are a teenager that is when you go to college that time you are not worried you are not bothered about anything in life okay your focus is sometimes more on things which are not necessary for our survival but at that point of time when you are in college when you are in the 9th standard 10th standard when you are a teenager certain things they seem to be very important but later on when you grow up and you look back you will realize that it was so foolish all right so here in this particular stage the life of a teenager he is sad over things which he should not be sad about then the next stage is being compared to the life of a soldier so the soldier has to be very brave because he's got lots of responsibilities okay he's got to do lots of hard work and sometimes he could have a bad temper also so shakespeare says then a soldier full of strange oaths and bearded like a bard jealous in honor sudden and quick in quarrel seeking the bubble reputation even in the cannon's mouth that is when you're young you have hot blood you tend to get angry very fast you tend to react very fast you have a lot of responsibilities also on your uh, shoulders okay so that way this is the stage which is very very difficult and very very stressful in our life and then the justice in fair round belly with cape on lined with eyes severe and beard of formal cut full of wise saws and modern instances so he plays his part then comes when you are now you have passed the youth in your life you have entered your 50s now maybe 40s and 50s some of your responsibilities are coming to an end you have uh, done most of your duties so now you are little relaxed and you have put on a lot of weight and you have a lot of experience also to share with the others so this is the next stage in your then comes to the stage where the sixth age shifts into the lean and slippered pantaloon with spectacles on nose and pouch on side this youthful hose well saved a world too wide so now you have crossed the age of 50 and now you are in your 60s you can neither be called young nor you can be called very old okay but you are not young anymore you are more towards uh, the age where you will become 
very old, you will become weak and you will become a uh, little bit dependent on others also. For his shrunk shank and his big manly voice will turn towards childish treble pipes and whistles in his sound. That means from this stage, from the sixth stage, you will very soon slip into the stage where your manly voice is gone. Where you again become a child. Okay? Where you are not able to speak properly. When you try to speak, whistling sounds will come, of your come out of your mouth. Last scene of all that ends this strange eventful history. A second childishness and mere oblivion. Oblivion means you don't know anything. You don't know whatever is happening. You are unaware of things which are happening around you. Now if you have your grandmother or your grandfather staying with you, you will realize that most of our grandparents, they have reached this part in life. They are very childish, they tend to fight without reason, they tend to cry without reason and they make demands like small children, isn't it? And sans teeth, sans teeth means all their teeth is gone, sans eyes, sans eyes means eyes are not gone but the eyesight is gone. They are not able to see things, they are not able to taste things okay and basically everything is gone except for the body the old aged body which is waiting to make an exit that is which is waiting to die and get out of this particular stage of life so children this was the explanation and the recitation of the poem all the world's stage now, like i told you before we have certain, you can say, exercises here. So there is one nice exercise in which you will get a gist of this entire, you can say, story. Let's see that first. So here are the seven stages. I found this beautiful painting which was made by someone online to depict this particular poem. So the seven stages. The first stage is infancy. Then we have the schoolboy. Then we have the teenager, the young man, the middle-aged person, old-aged person and the person who is on his deathbed. So these are the seven ages or stages in a man's life according to William Shakespeare. Alright, see these are the seven ages of human life by William Shakespeare. Let us look at this particular cloud exercise which is given in your uh, book. It's a vocabulary exercise. So once you understand and once you are able to figure out what these words mean, it means you have understood the meaning or the gist of the poem. So let's start. So what is the stage in your life? The stage in your life is nothing but your life itself. Okay? Characters in human life means the roles which are played by human beings. So who are the characters in the story, in the poem? They are the roles which are played by the human beings. What is a script? The script is nothing but the story of your life. Just like if you have a script in the drama, you have a script in your life also. The dialogues are the conversations which happen between the various characters. Okay? Entry means your birth and exit means your death. So once you understood this, it means that you have understood the entire poem. Now like I told you children, we have a figure of speech to be done here, imagery. So let us quickly see that before we wind up this lesson for today. So imagery means language that evokes sensory images. So what are sensory images? Sensory images are the images which are created by your sense organs. So you have your ears, you have your eyes, you have your nose, your skin and your tongue. These are the organs which give you an idea of what are the things around you in the world. So when you hear certain things, when you hear certain words, suddenly all of a sudden, these sensory images are invoked in your brain. 
So these kind of words or these kind of verses which are used in poetry are called as imagery. So it is a kind of a figure of speech. Let us look at some examples here. So a drip of ruby teardrops. So when you say a drip of a drip, so drip is a sound which is made by water, isn't it? So immediately the sound kind of thing comes into your ears. You can imagine hearing the sound of a drip. Alright, let us look at a few more examples. So see, to wake up where the green grass grows. So the moment I say green grass grows, I can visualize it. I can see myself standing in an open field with green grass all around me. So even this kind of a sentence is an example of imagery. Lips like cool sweet tea. So it is about taste. So when someone says tamarind. Okay, Imli. Immediately your mouth starts watering. When someone says Pani Puri, immediately your mouth starts watering. So that is also an example of imagery. You immediately relate it to that particular taste. Then you have streaming through a velvet sky. So tactile. When I say velvet, I remember immediately how velvet feels like in my hands. Okay. Stench. Stench means smell of the underworld. So immediately when you see stench, something which is not very pleasant comes to your mind. When you say perfume, it is pleasant. And stench is a word which stands for unpleasant smells. Okay children, so this was about imagery. Now you have a small exercise in your textbook about imagery. Let us do that before we wind up the lesson for today. So pick out the lines that contain imagery in the, that is a picture which is created in the mind of the following people. So when you say schoolboy, what are the lines in the poem which created an image of a schoolboy in your mind? So these are the lines, shining morning face, creeping like a snake. So when you hear these lines, you can just imagine how a schoolboy looks early in the morning and how he drags himself to school. A soldier, when you say, these are the images which come up in your mind, bearded like a part, even in the cannon's mouth. When you say, judge, fair and round belly, eyes severe. Severe here means serious, okay? And beard of formal cut. When you say, senior citizen, spectacles on the nose and big manly voice. So these are all the lines that contain imagery in this particular poem. Now children, today we looked at the poem called All the World's a Stage. We read the poem. I tried to explain the meaning of the poem to you. And we also looked at this particular uh, language feature that is imagery. So that was all for today children. Thank you so much. Let's meet again very soon for another lesson in English here through the virtual class of the Municipal Corporation of Greater Mumbai. Thank you once again. So children, wasn't that a wonderful video? And did you enjoy watching it? So if you want to watch more such videos in future, then please like this video and also subscribe to our channel, the MCGM Portal for Education and also hit the bell button so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video here. Thank you so much for now. Let's meet again soon.